This is video 342, and the goal here is to solve logarithmic equations. So we've talked about solving exponential equations. That's when the variable is in the exponent of some number, or perhaps e. Logarithmic is the opposite. Instead of x being in the exponent, x is in the logarithm. So here are two examples to help you follow that. It's just basically the log is involved, and you have an x value inside of the um, expression. So we have log base 4 of x plus 3 to the second equals 2. So we have to understand what this means. I need the x plus 3 out of there, okay? I need to figure out a way to get the x out of there and actually take the log base 4 of x plus 3 equal to 2. But the good news is it's a very simple process. What we're going to do is use what's called the log loop, and that's simply I'm going to rewrite this in exponential form. So I'm going to rewrite this as 4 to the second power equals x plus 3. That is an equivalent statement because of the definition of log and because this is an equation. So the good news is this is really easy to solve once I simply use the definition. So x is 13. And I'm done. It's that easy sometimes. Okay? But notice how simple this was to begin with. It was just one simple log expression. This next one is not a simple log expression, but it's a natural log, but that's okay. That just means it's in base e. And the other issue is I have this 3 out in front, so I have to get rid of this 3, and there's two big options. One option is to divide both sides by 3. The other option is I could have brought the 3 inside. And I'll kind of show you both and show you how both will give you the same result. So in blue, let's finish this part of blue. So if I divide both sides by 3, that gets rid of this, and I'm left with natural log of 2x equals 4. Now I use my understanding of natural log and change this to e. Remember, that's base e. e to the fourth equals 2x. Remember, e to the fourth is just a number. I can punch that into my calculator right now to see what the value is. But if I want the exact value, I would finish solving for x and see that x is e to the fourth divided by 2. That's my value for, e, for x, e to the fourth divided by 2. So that's solving it by getting rid of the 3 using just common algebraic techniques. But if I get rid of the 3 by using the exponent, then I rewrite it. So it looks like I would have natural log of 2x to the third equals 12 still, because remember I brought the 3 in by using the, prop, the power rule. Now I would use e to the 12, so e to the 12 equals 2x to the third. Now I have to use kind of what I know about exponents, because I need to operate with this 2 to the third stuff here, um, 2x to the third. That really means 2 to the third times x to the third. Hopefully you know 2 to the 3rd is 8, so this is 8x to the 3rd, equals e to the 12th. I'm going to have to divide both sides by 8 to get rid of this and get my x alone. Now I'm left with x to the 3rd equals e to the 12th over 8. So this isn't the nicest stuff that I'm working with here. There's probably making you realize that the other one was probably a better way. Because now I have to take the cubic root. I have to get rid of this 3. But there's one quick thing I could do, and I can take both sides to the 1 3rd power. That gives me x alone. Taking the other side to the 1 3rd power, I take 8 to the 1 3rd and e to the 12 to the 1 3rd. That would give me my e to the fourth, because we multiply exponents, that would give me my e to the fourth. And on the bottom, 8 to the one third is, remember how we got 8 to begin with? It was 2 to the third, so it's going to be over 2. Identical to the previous, but it's probably, you're probably noticing that it's probably better to get rid of the 3 the good old fashioned way, the way we know from algebra. So take advantage of that when you can, because some routes are faster than others. So let's take a look at the next example. Now we do not have quite as simple of an expression. We have logs, two different logs, but thankfully they're the same base, and they're equal to 3. So in order to do what we did in the previous one, we need a single log 
then we can undo it by using it and turning it into exponential form. So I need to think about how I can make this a single law of base 2. Since this is plus, we should know that that means I take it into a single law by making it a product of x times x minus 7. I use the product property. That's just on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, I still have but now I can use my zero, I can use my exponential log loop to help me rewrite this. 2 to the third equals this product, x times x minus 7. I have successfully gotten rid of the log. This is now just numbers and x's, which I'm much more familiar with. 8 equals x squared minus 7x. I just multiplied everything out. And now I'm going to subtract 8 from both sides, x squared minus 7x minus 8. At this point, you should know multiple strategies to solve a quadratic. Um, one quick thing I see right away is factoring. I know the zero product property works. So x, x minus 8 times x plus 1 is a factored form. Um, using generic rectangles, using mental math, that will be your factored form. And that tells me that either x minus 8 equals 0 or x plus 1 equals 0. So my two solutions are 8 and negative 1. Those are my two solutions that will make this equation true. If you're not entirely sure on that, you can always plug things back in. Log base 2 of 8, log base 2 of 8 minus 7, and ask yourself, is that equal to 3? And hopefully you know some of your basic facts about 2. These are all nice numbers. You should be able to work through this and make sure this answer makes sense. Now, we also want to check the other answer and make sure that we agree with negative 1. So let's see, log base 2 of negative 1. Uh-oh. There is no such thing. I can't take the log base 2 and get a negative number. So this is a not a solution. So in fact, this is not a solution to my logarithmic equation. So the only solution is 8. 8 will work. If you look back up here, 8 will work because 8 will be log base 2 of 8. 2 to the third is 8. Plus log base 2 of 1. This becomes 1 when you do 8 minus 7. That's 0. And that will equal 3. So my answer does check. So the one thing with logarithms is you definitely want to check your solutions because negatives do not work inside of logs. That doesn't mean x can't be negative. It means that value on the inside of the log cannot be a negative number. So be extremely careful when you're working with negatives, um, when you're working with logs, actually, in general. There's one other way to solve log equations, and it works with natural log or regular log. Um, notice there's logs on both sides, and here's why this is nice, because I can use what's called the one-to-one -one property. That simply states if the natural log, if the log of A equals the log of B, then, well duh, A equals B, so I can simply cancel out the logs, and that's the one-to-one -one property. There's only one value that will give me A and B, and those A and B have to be the same. That's the only way to work, because of the one-to-one, -one, because it's a function. So we are going to try and work that, since the right is a natural log and the left has a natural log, but I need this to be one natural log in order for the one-to-one -to, -one to work. So I'm going to use the quotient property to make this into a single natural log, and then I can use the one-to-one -one property basically just canceling out the logs, because if the natural log of this equals the natural log of this, then they must be equal. So x plus 2 over 4x minus 4x plus 3 equals 1 over x. That's my one-to-one -one property. Now I'm just going to solve using what I know about solving equations. Cross multiply, so I get 4x plus 3 equals x squared plus 2x. I see it's a quadratic. So I am going to solve using my skills of quadratics and get 0 alone. So it's going to be x squared minus 2x minus 3. I simply subtracted 4x minus 3 from both sides to get that. A 
and that allows me to get the negative 2x to the negative 3. Um, these numbers look pretty easy, so I'm thinking factoring will be my best bet here. So let's see, this factors into x, uh, x minus 3 times x plus 1. That will give me the negative 3 and the negative 2x. And then now I'm going to use my zero product property. So my zero product property says that either x equals 3 or x equals negative 3. But I definitely want to check this answer to make sure these work. Because when I write two solutions, I want to be careful and make sure they both work. So now I'm going to plug them back into the very original equation and make sure I can actually take the natural log of what these solutions were that I found. So let's see. I'm going to start with the negative because I'm assuming the negative may not work. So let's see. Natural log of negative 1 plus 2. Oh, so far so good. That's just the natural log of 1. That's okay. Let's see. Minus the natural log of... 4 times negative 1 plus 3. Oh, this is going to be a problem. It says natural log of negative 1. There is no natural log of negative 1, so this is not a solution. Negative 1 is not a solution. So let's try the other one. Now I'm going to plug in my other answer, which was 3. So 3 plus 2, 4 times 3. And let's see what I get here. Sorry about that. Let's see what I get. So I'm going to get in the inside natural log of 5 minus the natural log of 12 plus 3 is 15. Remember, that's just the natural log of 5 over 15, which is the natural log of one third. So that's about as simple as I can get on the left. But on the right, notice it's quite simple. It's just plugging in natural log of 1 over 3. And notice that they are equal. So my only solution is x equals 3. So be sure to check your answers because some of these will create answers that do not work. Okay, do not work in the original equation. So your job is to try two checkpoints using any of the strategies that you saw here. There are others you could do, okay? But you can use either strategy for these. Um, but the first one and the second one you'll have to use. Um, the first one, you cannot use the second strategy of the one-to-one, -one, okay? But try the two strategies, bring in your questions. Um, the number one goal is to get X out of the log using one of the two options that were presented. Good luck and bring your questions into class.